Salvador de Bahia, Brazil. This city is the heart of the Afro-Brazilian culture. Sure, you might know it for its world-famous carnival, gorgeous beaches, or streets that look like this one. But that's not where we're starting our journey. We're diving into this place a stomach first. Because if you really want to get to the heart of any place, you start with what people eat. We flew in just this morning, but this trip has been nearly a decade in the making. In college, I hung out with the international students a lot. I had no friends. They wanted to learn local life from a real American. It was destiny. Atula, a native Bahian, was my first Brazilian friend at university. And for 10 years, I've promised this guy I'd come visit. And he'd always go on about all the food he wanted to show Martin and I. Promises made and promises kept. We want to try Brazilian dishes. We want to try Bahian cuisine. We want to dig into the plates that they don't talk about online, but you would grow up eating. But first things first, we need to find Atula. I'm finally here. Oh my god. I've been wanting to come for a Welcome years. to Bahia, first capital yeah. in Brazil and the greatest state. Bahia. Welcome to Bahia. Yeah. Oh. Beyonce was here. Okay. Yeah. She knows, she knows the good place. Yeah. yeah. And so the adventure begins. Atula drive us past the beach and straight to lunch. We got a lot to eat over the next few days. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Look at this. But before we start eating, we need to understand what makes Bahian food different. Atula tells us that the main key ingredient we'll notice is dende oil, a rich red palm oil used extensively for frying and seasoning foods in Brazil and especially Bahia. It gives a nutty flavor that combines well with some other key flavors like malagueta peppers, coconut, banana, and you guessed it, lots of fresh seafood. But to really understand the food here, you have to look back, way back. Salvador wasn't just Brazil's first capital. It was the hub of the transatlantic slave trade. Over two centuries, millions of Africans were forcibly brought here, with Bahia receiving 1.5 million slaves. Bahian cuisine came from the enslaved Africans, who not only brought their own style of cooking with them, but also modified Portuguese dishes with African herbs and spices. Atula take us to Casa de Teresa, his favorite restaurant in town for one special dish we are looking for. Very good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the first time in Brazil we ha you guys have to eat Brazilian moqueca. Okay, yes. Uh, Bahia moqueca is amazing. It's good to have friends in Salvador. <laughs> the cuisine here in, in Bahia, it's different than other parts of Brazil, right? Yes. Yeah, what yes. makes it different? Spicy, kind of spicy. Okay. Yeah, but not like there are some places that. If you say, oh, acarajé, for example, if you say, I want a hot acarajé, it doesn't mean hot like temperature, oh, it means it's spicy. spicy. Yeah. Oh. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> and there are some people in Brazil that don't know about this. Yeah. yeah. I didn't expect that. Oh, I'm pumped. <laughs> Over in uh, Argentina and Uruguay, things were not spicy. So oh, yeah. <laughs> bringing in the spice and we got the guarana. The guarana, I'm so excited yes. for this. Cheers. How do you say cheers? cheers. Saúde. Como saúde. Saúde. Guaraná is a popular soft drink made from the Amazonian guaraná plant. It tastes almost like a berry mixed with an apple and it's loaded with caffeine. Ashley shows us a picture and says it's called the eyes of the Amazon. It does actually look like eyes. Oh yeah, it looks the like the eyes of the jungle. Oh my gosh, it's kind of <laughs> creepy. Our first dish is presented to us and we're starting with some classic Brazilian appetizers you can find all over Brazil, like coxinha, which are deep fried fritters stuffed with chicken and boldinhos, another type of deep fried fritter made of things like fish, shrimp, meat, and in this case, even feijoada. Anything fried is a win in our book. But back to this feijoada one. Feijoada is a big deal in Bahia. It's typically a hearty stew of black beans with pork or beef, simmered for hours with a blend of rich spices. Traditionally, it's a dish served in a big pot, often enjoyed on weekends since it usually requires a nap afterwards, according to Atula. But here, they make it into a bolinho as well. Wow. <laughs> I am going to like it here. This is delicious. Uh, a fried bean sort of thing. Amazing. I decided to get a head start on the other bolinhos, like this fish one. <laughs> like fish is still oh, yeah. moving. <laughs> There's a party in my mouth. <laughs> I think it also helps that we've just eaten a ton of meat for like three weeks straight, so this oh. is something different. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
It's the one that had chicken, right? Mm -hmm. Cochina, very, very good. I love it. I wonder if Beyonce ate this when she came. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Lots of Brazilian food. I, hope I think so. Yeah. This is delicious. I love how soft it is inside. Mm, it's like a little pasty. Yep. Yum. Before we get too full on appetizers, our main event comes the bubbling coconut milk and seafood packed milkeka that this place is so famous for. Wow. <laughs> so this is kind of like a soup. Or a stew, or what is this? Not a soup, because uh, it's, it's cooked. Oh, yeah. it's cooked with dende oil. This is very Bahia, right? Yes, this is, this is traditional. This, this smell is really dende oil. Yeah. Oh, yum. Oh, you like it? Yeah, it smells delicious. <laughs> and there's lots of seafood. This is gonna be good. And there's a specific way you put this one together on your plate. You start by ladling some of the rich boiling broth over a bed of fluffy rice. Next, a dollop of thick savory paste, a more condensed version of the moqueca, to give it that perfect consistency. Then comes farofa. You don't want to miss this step. If you're not familiar, you might just think we're sprinkling some plain flour over the food, but farofa is anything but plain. It's made from cassava flour, toasted with butter, salt, and sometimes mixed with bits of bacon, onions, or banana for an extra kick of flavor. It adds this texture that is so unique, but it works. So is that enough? Huh? Oh, you can more? more. Yeah, more. It's okay. really good. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> I like it because you kind of have to create your own little oh, yeah. mix. It's like interactive. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is delicious. I love this huge chunk of fish in here. This is fresh. <laughs> So good. Not spicy either. I thought, it was, I thought it was gonna be spicy. It's perfect. So good. I love this because it, for me it's a little bit like something, some kind of foods that we have in Mexico, like mole for instance, that we combine like some type of protein, then sauce, and then with the rice and spices and all stuff. So it tastes so good. This is my favorite part because it adds some crunchiness. <laughs> So as you can see, we are loving the food here so far, but there's more things to try on our list. And our next item is not a food, but rather a drink. After settling into our accommodations, we decide to pay a visit to the beach to try Brazil's famous cocktail. And let me tell you, life is so good here in Salvador de Bahia. Talk on Instagram, just If you don't land in Brazil and then you order a caipirinha, you're doing everything wrong. The caipirinha is like your first um, moments in Brazil. The first sip, it's not what you're expecting. A little humid, a little chaotic, I don't know where is everything, they're speaking in a different language. Then the second sip is when you feel, oh, this is actually amazing. This is a place where I, maybe I want to move. This is full of color, these people uh, they're full of energy and joy. That's the sugar over there and the alcohol combined. And then the third sip is the one that you're finishing just dancing, fajo, samba, or whatever rhythm they have over here. So probably you already heard about this drink. It's worldwide known. But let me explain you a little bit what it is. It's because some people, they make it with tequila or vodka. No, the real caipirinha, it has cachaça that is from here. It's a liquor that they take it from the sugar cane. Cachaça is from 32 to 42 percent alcohol so boom that's how you feel how you feel and of course sugar and original has to be with lime that's the way to do a caipirinha proceed with caution on these ones folks one minute you're drinking a caipirinha and the next you're joining a drum line or thinking you can do capoeira which is all coming in next week's video, by the way. If you like what you're seeing so far, don't forget to subscribe to help us reach our goal of getting 100,000 subscribers and turn on notifications to get more videos like this one to help you travel deeper and see the world the tourist local way. A little later, Achla texts us that his friends are meeting up for Lambreta. We don't know what that is or where we're going, but Achla hasn't failed our taste buds yet and we're starving. His friends are amused at our amusement of this beer cooling contraption. I guess they're pretty common in Brazil. Saúde. Saúde. So we're at a place called Sal Marinho, and we definitely wouldn't have known about this place if it wasn't for Not at all. And right now we're with his friend 
and they're so nice. And we're laughing and they're explaining us everything about like music, food, how, how they deal with the carnival. Yeah, right here. exactly. And also, a random, a random thing. They told us, you know, outside of Brazil, probably you only know the Carnaval do Rio, the Janeiro. Yeah. But over here, they told us this one is the best one. I know, it's great. And I mean, we just met these three guys, and they're so nice. And it's exactly why I remember that in university, I was always drawn to the Brazilian exchange students and meeting them because they're just a friendly group of people. And before we know it, our mysterious lambreta is being brought out straight from the stove in the same pot it was cooked in. Put a little bit of the caldo. Oh, okay. Go ahead. All right, here Sorry. I go. Here I go. <laughs> yes. Was that too much? No, no. It's okay. <laughs> Very, very good. This is called lambreta, like some clams. And they make it so hot that it opens. They put some onion and a couple more things. But it doesn't, it doesn't taste like a fishy, you know? Mm -hmm. And they put a little bit of the broth and then some lime. And it tastes delicious. Uh, actually, I was joking around. I don't know if I was joking around. It was an actual fact, but he said this is a prodigia. <laughs> wow. And also he said like he loves it whenever he's in the beach and he has this dish and also something to drink. So far, so good. We've tried six new things in Brazil, but the adventures continue. We sleep off this meal and then continue to a new neighborhood the next day. So it's time for lunch and we are in Carmo looking for a good restaurant so we can eat more delicious food. What's up with this neighborhood? It was like the first neighborhood uh, in Salvador. Okay. And like uh, it's Carmo, simplified, but it's actually Santo Antonio Alen do Carmo. And there is really good restaurants and bars and it's a really good place to hang out with your friends. So hey, Yay. let's go to Carmo this weekend. Yeah, let's go. We stroll into a place that doesn't look like much from the outside, and for a moment, we think we've crashed into someone's living room. But no, this is a family-run restaurant called Fera. We start with a few more of these coxinhas that we can't get enough of, and then Ashley starts listing all these fruits we can put into our drinks. He's saying fruits that we don't know in English, and Google Translate really isn't helping us understand either. It's then that we realize that we really need to add some fruits to our list to try. The waiters overhear us after serving our drinks and start bringing over all sorts of things for us to try. This is acerola. Oh my gosh, it looks so delicious. Oh, and they gave us some someone. This is acerola. Okay, so this is acerola. Acerola? Acerola. Looks like a cherry, but it's different. Whoa. Ooh. Sour. Oh my gosh. But good. Yeah. Mm. Vitamin C. Yeah, is this the one that has more vitamin C yeah. than an orange? So we're getting our vitamin C in after eating too much meat in Argentina. <laughs> so, like, powerful though. It's so strong. It's like so good. Oh, so refreshing. There is a fruit called caja and another fruit called umbu. This is like umbu caja. <laughs> okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, the combination they were in love. <laughs> wow. And now it's umbu caja. Yeah, that's yeah. a love story. And it has a, it, you have to peel it, or it's like comino and tecaroso. Acho que tem, né? Uh, uh. Like that. It says. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> Sour. Yeah. I can name you at least. Four fruits that I feel over here. Uh -huh. The first one is guayaba. Guava. Guayaba. Okay. The second one is pineapple. The third one is orange. Orange. <laughs> nice. I can't figure out the fourth one. <sighs> so good. You're gonna love it. Like whatever you 
bite it, a little sour, and then all the flavor just comes out. Mm. Has a bit big seed. They keep bringing us fruit after fruit. They found out that we're foreigners and they're like, we need to show you all of this. And that is so Brazil. That is yeah. exactly, like they want you to see everything. But before we eat too much fruit, our main dish comes out. And we can tell this is gonna be good. So this we call um, carne de sol, como sun's meat with tomatoes and uh, frijoles, uh, beans, mm -hmm. fraginho. It's a type where as they cook the, the beans, and also with cutted tomatoes, we call vinagrechi here, and a special farofa. It's like a farofa to put the onions and really good. Really, Perfect. Really good. And is this something you find all over Brazil or only here in Salvador de Bahia? This carne de sol is common in Brazil. Okay. Yeah, but this type more here. You know? Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Now you're gonna see it like the farofa cooked yeah. on an, in a meal. Mm. Dang, it's just like, I never had beans like this. This looks like kind of like black eyed peas or something, I don't know. It's so good, it's simple, it's good, it's hearty, it's what your grandma would serve you. This is delicious. I am, I'm enjoying my time here in Salvador de Bahia. It's so good, simple but good. Well, I put a lot of onion, risking that Juliana's not gonna kiss me. <laughs> but we'll see. The farofa is different, right? Mm hmm. But the flavors, they mix together very well. I love it. I don't know how to call it. For me, I call it the dust. Like the little thing. No, no. The dust. It combines so well, we also tried it uh, yesterday. Yeah, the moqueca, yeah. Because it absorbs like, the, the liquids of the fat, it, but oh, it tastes yeah. so good. I truly don't know how Achala lived in Spokane, Washington with me, away from all this delicious food. I mean, he was talking about how his favorite thing in the US was Panda Express. <laughs> that, that does not come close to this. This is delicious. Before we go, the owner and the staff chat with us a bit and share their gratitude for trying their food, which has to be a first for us during our travels. They're good people here. Joao even takes a minute to answer some questions we have. Did you grow up here or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Born and raised. What do you think makes this place so special? People. The people? People, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They warm. We try to make everyone stay the best, you know? Like I did with you guys. Yeah, exactly. Trying to show a little bit of the, our culture with the, the, the fruits, you know? Yeah, what about the food here? What makes the food different in Salvador de Bahia? You know, when you eat at home, it tastes better. Yeah. We have like a, a magical way to do in every restaurant, or no matter where you're gonna eat, there is that taste. You know? I tasted it here. I tasted. It felt like I was at home, and I don't even have a Brazilian yeah. grandma, but so it tastes like my Brazilian grandma's food. That's it. We, we offer you guys warm. Yeah, you know? I feel that. Well, thank you so much for having us. Thank it you, guys. A pleasure. The next day, we explored Salvador de Bahia on our own for a bit, and end up next to the beach again. We've been on the hunt for tapioca since we landed, and this spot in the Barra neighborhood serves just that. Upon first look, this might look like a quesadilla to you, and yeah, it's kind of similar, but the crust or like the tortilla part is actually tapioca and I love these things. I've only ha ever had it though as a sweet thing. It's kind of like a crepe but actually recommended that we try it the salty way because that's more common here in Bahia and to do so we're here at a place called Tap Tapiocaria do Faro <laughs> and I'm not saying this is the best tapioca you're gonna find in town but you can have it by the beach. It sounds so good on a day like today. Let's give it a try. Mm. There's all sorts of things you could get inside. You could do cheese, you could do shrimp, you could do meat. Martin does, did a meat one. I did coconut and cheese and butter, which sounded unusual. It's good. Tapioca is kind of funny because it almost tastes like you're eating styrofoam and it looks like it too. But it's good. It's just like one you know, of those nice little snacky food that you have by the beach. Nothing too crazy. So we are waiting for Angela for dinner and he told us to wait in this place that is called Boteco Rio Vermelo. And of course, it's a Sunday evening. There's a lot of football or soccer in the TVs. So everybody's supporting their own team. We have some from Bahia, we have some from Flamengo over there, Atletico Mineiro. So it's a nice, it's a nice evening. 
So Achula told us that we're going to try something called acarajé. Yeah. We don't have any idea what is it, but he said it's very special. So we're looking forward to that. Soon, the plaza comes alive as a forjo band plays and locals start dancing around us. Across the plaza, we find our food spot for tonight. A Carajé de Tiña, run by three Bayana women who dish out one of the best Afro-Brazilian dishes in town. A Carajé is one of the most calorie-filled street snacks you'll ever have the good fortune to try. It's essentially a deep-fried ball of crushed black-eyed peas, palm oil, and onions that's sliced open and stuffed with dried shrimp and vatapá, a rich and spicy puree of shrimp, bread, peanuts, coconut milk, dende oil, and other ingredients. This dish is a staple food in Bahia, but it's all thanks to the Yoruba people of Nigeria who were brought here as enslaved Africans. I don't know how to dig into this, but it looks good. I'm a little nervous about this paste. I'm really surprised by how much they love their fried food here. I didn't expect that. Yeah. Paradise for me, honestly. And then these little shrimps that go along with it, let's give it a try. They use some sort of spice that I'm not familiar with, but it's very good. They serve cold. And I guess I kind of ate the shell. It kind of just works all together. Mm, yeah, that's good. Angela was just saying, I was asking, I was like, this is made, this is, it almost tastes like bread, like the consistency. What is this? He said it's it smashed beans, but because they have to mix it so much, that uh, their arm gets really strong. And actually, if you have like a really big arm, they say like you have an arm of akarajé. I wish I had arms of akarajé. And I won't get them by eating this, I know. <laughs> and no trip to Brazil would be complete without some acai. This is one of my first acai. And I'm surprised with the amount of toppings that you can put on top. Well, I'm surprised that we even had the option to do toppings. The thing is, is like acai has kind of spread into us being all around the world. So, um, but they do it differently here. They have you just put your own together. We don't do that in the U.S., so that was kind of fun and we were, we looked a little shy. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy this trip uh, through the Brazilian and Bahian yeah. um, food. There was one dish we didn't get to show, feijoada. And it's our own fault. We didn't realize that that's pretty much only served in places on Saturdays and Sundays. It's Saturday. Yes, yeah, it's, it's traditional for Saturdays and the weekends. So we missed our chance. Yeah, we, we kind of planned that bad. We left a video over here for you guys to keep watching our adventures. So long. Travel well. And make the world your neighborhood. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.